Reciprocating engine cylinders are often classified by whether they are single or double acting, depending on how the working fluid acts on the piston. Single acting, a single acting cylinder in a reciprocating engine is a cylinder in which the working fluid acts on one side of the piston only. A single acting cylinder relies on the load, springs, other cylinders, or the momentum of a flywheel, to push the piston back in the other direction. Single acting cylinders are found in most kinds of reciprocating engine. They are almost universal in internal combustion engines and are also used in many external combustion engines such as Stirling engines and some steam engines. They are also found in pumps and hydraulic rams. Double acting A double acting cylinder is a cylinder in which the working fluid acts alternately on both sides of the piston. In order to connect the piston in a double acting cylinder to an external mechanism, such as a crankshaft, a hole must be provided in one end of the cylinder for the piston rod and this is fitted with a gland or stuffing box to prevent escape of the working fluid. Double acting cylinders are common in steam engines but unusual in other engine types. Many hydraulic and pneumatic cylinders use them where it is needed to produce a force in both directions. A double acting hydraulic cylinder has a port at each end, supplied with hydraulic fluid for both the retraction and extension of the piston. A double acting cylinder is used where an external force is not available to retract the piston or where high force is required in both directions of travel. Steam engines Steam engines normally use double acting cylinders. However, early steam engines, such as atmospheric engines and some beam engines, were single acting. These often transmitted their force through the beam by means of chains and an arch head, as only a tension in one direction was needed. Where these were used for pumping mine shafts and only had to act against a load in one direction, single acting designs remained in use for many years. The main impetus towards double acting cylinders came when Watt was trying to develop a rotative beam engine that could be used to drive machinery via an output shaft. With a single cylinder engine, a double acting cylinder gave a smoother power output. The high pressure engine, as developed by Richard Trevithick, used double acting pistons and became the model for most steam engines afterwards. Some of the later steam engines, the high speed steam engines, used single acting pistons of a new design. The crosshead became part of the piston and there was no longer any piston rod. This was for similar reasons to the internal combustion engine as avoiding the piston rod and its seals allowed a more effective crankcase lubrication system. Small models and toys often use single acting cylinders for the above reason but also to reduce manufacturing costs. Internal combustion engines In contrast to steam engines, nearly all internal combustion engines have used single acting cylinders. Their pistons are usually trunk pistons, where the gudgeon pin joint of the connecting rod is within the piston itself. This avoids the crosshead, piston rod and its sealing gland, but it also makes a single acting piston almost essential. This, in turn, has the advantage of allowing easy access to the bottom of the piston for lubricating oil, which also has an important cooling function. This avoids local overheating of the piston and rings. Equals crankcase compression two-stroke engines equals small petrol two-stroke engines, such as for motorcycles, Use crankcase compression rather than a separate supercharger or scavenged blower. This uses both sides of the piston as working faces, the lower side of the piston acting as a piston compressor to compress the inlet charge ready for the next stroke. The piston is still considered as single acting, as only one of these faces produces power. Equals double acting internal combustion engines equals. Some early gas engines, such as Lenoir's original engines from around 1860, were double acting and followed steam engines in their design. Internal combustion engines soon switched to single acting cylinders. This was for two reasons, as for the high speed steam engine, the high force on each piston and its connecting rod was so great that it placed large demands upon the bearings. A single acting piston, where the direction of the forces was consistently compressive along the connecting rod, allowed for tighter bearing clearances. Secondly the need for large valve areas to provide good gas flow, whilst requiring a small volume for the combustion chamber so as to provide good compression, monopolized the space available in the cylinder head. 
Lenoir's steam engine-derived cylinder was inadequate for the petrol engine and so a new design, based around poppet valves and a single acting trunk piston appeared instead. Extremely large gas engines were also built as blowing engines for blast furnaces, with one or two extremely large cylinders and powered by the burning of furnace gas. These, particularly those built by car paragraph RTING, use double acting cylinders. Gas engines require little or no compression of their charge, in comparison to petrol or compression ignition engines, and so the double acting cylinder designs were still adequate, despite their narrow, convoluted passageways. Double acting cylinders have been infrequently used for internal combustion engines since, although Burmester and Wayne made two stroke cycle double acting diesels for marine propulsion before 1930. The first, of 7,000 horsepower, was fitted in the British MV America in 1929. The 2B and WSCDA engines fitted to the MV Stirling Castle in 1937 produced 24,000 horsepower each. Equals USS Pompano equals, in 1935 the US submarine USS Pompano was ordered as part of the Perch class six boats were built, with three different diesel engine designs from different makers. Pompano was fitted with HOR. Eight cylinder double acting engines that were a license built version of the MA and auxiliary engines of the cruiser Leipzig. Owing to the limited space available within the submarines, either opposed piston or, in this case, double acting engines were favored for being more compact. Pont for now, Euro Euro S engines were a complete failure and were wrecked during trials before even leaving the Mare Island Navy Yard. Pompano was laid up for eight months until 1938 while the engines were replaced. Even then the engines were regarded as unsatisfactory and were replaced by Fairbanks Morse engines in 1942. While Pompano was still being built, the Salmon-class submarines were ordered. Three of these were built by electric boat, with a nine-cylinder development of the HOR engine. Although not as great a failure as Pompano Euro Euro S engines, this version was still troublesome and the boats were later re-engined with the same General Motors 16 to 248 V16 engines as their sister boats. Other electric boat constructed submarines of the Sargo and Sed Dragon classes were also built with these nine-cylinder HOR engines, but later re-engined. Hydraulic cylinders. See main hydraulic cylinder article. Footnotes. References.